My enemies are many. My equals are none. In the shade of olive trees, they said Italy could never be conquered. In the land of pharaohs and kings, they said Egypt could never be humbled. In the realm of forest and snow, they said Russia could never be tamed. Now they say nothing. They fear me, like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. I say, I am Napoleon. I am Emperor. Napoleon and his godless revolutionaries have no respect for the status quo. They insist on meddling with the balance of power on mainland Europe. Defenseless Liguria has been annexed by France, and such behavior cannot be tolerated. As a result, Great Britain has joined forces with Austria and Russia to oppose French continental ambitions. Sweden, Portugal, and the smaller Italian states have vowed to aid the struggle but the three great powers must take most of the strain in opposing this monstrous revolutionary threat. Whilst Austria and Russia attempt to deal with Napoleon on the fields of Bavaria, you must ensure that his navy is kept in check. Admiral Villeneuve's fleet must be intercepted by the Royal Navy, lest the armies of France march on British shores. Then, inshore blockades are maintained across all French ports. Finally, your long-standing ally, Portugal, must be aided in pushing through into occupied Spain, opening a second front and splitting the might of Napoleon's armies. Hi everyone, welcome to a new series, Napoleon Total War. Yes, um, I was going to do Empire Total War and I actually recorded the first episode, which was, but it took me about three hours before we had our first battle and I just thought mm, maybe Empire Total War would be a little bit slow for a series, but... Napoleon uh, is a little bit faster paced, um, so hopefully we can get into action quicker and um, there's not so much technology and research and stuff to do, uh, so it may be a little bit quicker. I've elected to do a campaign with the Coalition and of course choosing Great Britain, Great Britain um, because the, the sacrilege of the opening scene, seeing HMS Victory being burnt on the shores is just... oh. Oh, sends a chill up my spine, and I thought, no, must not have that situation. So, I've chosen to go easy and be one of the Brits. Um, obviously, we could have been um, Russia, uh, Prussia, uh, or... Is Spain is the other option you can choose? Possibly not. Let's have a look. So, we're at war with Spain, so it's not war. It must be Portugal. Um... Okay, we're starting in the year 1805, we're early January in 1805, and of course, um, Spain is ruled um, by the Catholic King. I... Has Napoleon, hang on, uh, let me just Google this, has Napoleon put his um, cousin in charge? Uh, sorry, not his cousin, his, his brother in charge. Um, Joseph Napoleon Bonaparte. He was king of Naples from 1806 to 1808, and then king of Spain from 1808 to uh, 1813. Okay, so no, it's not uh, Joseph Bonaparte yet, so it must be Ferdinand, mustn't it? So, okay, <laughs> all sorts of things happening in Spain. Yeah, um, Napoleon Bonaparte took hold of Spain and basically um, put Ferdinand in prison and put his brother on the throne. So, yeah, as you would, why not get more cash into the uh, the family coffers? But, um, yeah, okay, so, and then obviously you've got in 18, 10, 18 and 10, 1811, the Peninsula War, where Portugal uh, and Spain is, well, Portugal is just about hanging on. Uh, France is pushing its um, territory into Portugal, and obviously the Peninsula War is all about 
securing Portugal and pushing Bonaparte out of Spain as well. He was a busy boy, was old Napoleon. So, um, my history of the Napoleonic Wars is mainly based on books and TV series uh, Hornblower <laughs> and uh, Sharp, Sharp's Rifles, or you know, Captain Sharp, Richard Sharp um, from the Bernard Cromwell books. So, um, yeah, it could be slightly um, sketchy at times. We have a large French navy coming around the Lisbon coast here. Um, we don't get to see the type of ships. Well, we've got... No, this is a Portuguese... Oh, it's a Spanish, sorry. Do I have any navies? I have a navy up here. Here's my fleet. What do we got up here? Ah, Horatio Nelson, the legend. With his first rate ship. Yes, so the rates of ships is um, how many guns they got, basically. So a first rate is anything, I think, over a hundred guns. So, um, Admiral Horatio Nelson here, who's you can see, he's absolute legend. Glorious Admiral, yes indeed. Darling of the press, yes. Uh, his flagship is a 122 gun heavy first rate HMS Rose. Wow, look at that. What else has he got in his fleet? He's got a 106 first rate pickup. So yeah, anything over 100 guns is a first rate. Uh, then we've got a 98 gun second rate, because it's just below the 100 gun mark. Dolphin, but still a powerful ship of the line. Uh, we got a second our sister ship to Dolphin Dragon. We've got a third rate, which has got 80 guns, the Shannon, HMS Shannon. Still pretty handy in a fight. And we've got a 74 gun third rate queen. So that is quite a powerful fleet we've got there under the um, under the command of one of the best admirals uh, we will ever have. We could potentially do some raiding on the line. On the, uh, sorry, the trade route. Which will probably encourage these guys to come out. Here you go, Pierre Charles Villeneuve. He's the one we got to stop his fleet getting to Britain. So we're going to do some piracy on the high seas. Our fleet is blockading a trade route which is used by the enemy. Cutting off the vital source of their income. All enemy merchant ships using this route will be raided. Letters of mark have been issued to your privateers to aid them in this purpose. Legal pirates. That's what privateers are. Of course, we've got Gibraltar, the actual crucial strategic bit of land and port which is kind of guarding the strait here which uh, basically guards and allows whatever it wants into the Mediterranean Sea. It all has to pass through here. We're going to build a dockyard. Uh, with this we can recruit a uh, classy ship by one. Uh, we get 24th gun ship, 6th rate, a sloop, a brig, carronade if we research carronade guns. 32 gun 5th rate and a 38 gun 5th rate or we could go for a trading port we can get cash but no warships I think down here it's going to be quite strategic although cash would be tr trade and cash is always important uh, we've got we've got the ports up here where we could potentially some trade routes here just close that for a second uh, trade routes up there. Okay. I noticed all the trade routes down here as well. Um, but I think if we get a, a dockyard and get some more ships built there, that is probably going to be the best course of action. This is going to be a little, you know, a little warmongering <laughs> territory. We're also going to increase the barracks. Uh, what we currently got based in, well, we got one unit of uh, first regiment of um, militia poorly equipped and trained but ideal for maintaining public order right let's get some light dragoons they're good for keeping law and order but let's get let's get some uh, uh, lined troops lined troops created um, okay that's all we've got territory wise down there I don't think we, we have no territory down here yet. He says yet. Yeah. We're all peace with those. Right, let's go and have a look at Blighty and see what we can do. We've got another 
Channel Fleet here under command of William Corn Wallace. He's got a 50 gun fourth rate, uh, supported by a 32 gun fifth rate Enterprise. Enterprise with a Z. Ooh. Oof. A twinge mail back reading that. Right, uh, we've also got a spy here. Who's this? Percival Slaughter. Right, can you? Should we get him onto mainland Europe then? So if we come over here to Cornwall, I'm aware of that, Cornwallis. Thank you. Oh, we'll come to you then, spy. Don't you worry. You save your legs, and we'll pop him over it over here into France. Seeking cover. Right. Let's get him out of the way. He's there. We can probably use him next time to do some spying or some sabotage. Uh, we've got a army here. It's got a couple of units of uh, foot. King's German Legion foot infantry. That sounds like an elite. Well, they're slightly better in morale and defense, but yeah, quite nice. Uh, we've got a couple of units of nine-pound foot ar artillery, and we've got. Um, a couple of light dragoons units under the command of, of course, Arthur Wellesley, later to become the Duke of Wellington, but just Wellesley at the moment because uh, he hasn't made his. Well, he's kind of he's making his name. Um, what? Who else do we have here? We have a gentleman, Joss Hathaway. Let's stick him into a college to do some research. Then. Aha! Aha! Learning and culture. And of course, if anyone is familiar with Empire, this is obviously a cut-down version of the technologies that we can investigate, uh, uh, that we can research. Sorry, not investigate. Um, national debt minus five upkeep to the cost of all armies, plus five uh, turn wealth for all your towns. That's quite good. I think we want to get some military stuff done. So we've got improved coppering, which is going to be good. Um, minus five percent upkeep on all ships. Advance, fire in advance, that's quite a good thing to have. Do we have, I take it, we should already know square at this point, shouldn't we? Let's have a quick drill school, field ambulances, grand battery, uh, carcass shot. Oh yeah, that's horrible. Um, top gallants, 10% uh, increase in speed and battleship with top gallants, okay. Uh, logistics, mass mobilization, national census. Minus four recruitment costs. Oh, okay, that's quite good. But anyway, let's concentrate what we can get. We've got conscription here, which is minus two happiness for the lower classes. But increase recruitment slots for your home region by one. It's useful. Uh, diamond formation. It's probably cavalry, is it? Yeah, enables cavalry diamond formation. This replaces the wedge formation. Far in advance, we've already looked at. Um, that allows our infantry units to be able to fire in advance. And carronade, if we want to get the carronade ships. Um, we've got division of labour in the industrial part, which is plus three wealth generation to all buildings. Well, that's good. These are all six, are they? Yeah, they all look like six. Let's get division of labour off and running to begin with. Um, let's have a quick look at our government. Currently under the command of George the Third. That this is the mad one. This is the one the Americans didn't like so much because they kept he kept taxing them. Um, he was in fact mad. He had well, who knows? He had some sort of mental disorder. Um, and I'm not sure if his son George the Fourth had currently taken um, taken over um, because it, obviously it's got him down as as the monarch, which he always was. But George the Fourth, um, George the Fourth actually made the decisions as regent during the Napoleonic Wars. So, yeah, okay. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, currently, we are making fourteen hundred income per turn. So we need to get some trade going. Um, again, I'm wondering: do I drop my tax levels? To increase growth so that will obviously drop our no not just yet that's too much of a drop in cash often you can drop the tax levels and that will increase the growth which over a longer period will um, generate more wealth from your towns um, our Prime Minister is William Pitt 
He's not really giving us any bonuses. Our treasury is William Huskinson, who actually looks pretty good. Justice is John Scott, who looks minus three to the cost of town watch. Oh, that's quite good. Uh, plus one to rep repression in all regions, which is quite good. The average, we've got um, the Navy, Henry Dundas, he looks good, and so does the Treasury. Everyone else is a bit meh. And there's our trade. So, what we need to do is have a look for our ports. Here we go, we've got a port over here in Waterford. So let's get a trading port built, and then we'll get some trade ships sent up to these trading points and hopefully get make some money right let's recruit a merchant ship we got we got just under 2000 left in Swansea uh, what can we build we could build an in industrial building improve your wealth of your region this will give us minus three recruitment cost to artillery uh, plus 250 regional wealth or we could get a gunsmith and that's uh, minus three. Let's let's get the manufacturing then, because we want the money. We need the wealth generation. We've got another ship here. Let's get another trade ship created. We're down to oh, that's all our money gone basically. Um, we got some trade ships up here doing a good job. But we need to get as many as we can, and maybe we'll get Wellesley in the fight as soon as possible. We've got another ship down yes, here. Your Majesty. Um, George Elphinstone, he's got a 64 gun third rate, and he's also accompanied by a 38 gun fifth rate. Right, okay. Do you want to come back over here? Under sail. And you can deposit Wellesley's army. And who should we attack first? Well, we'll send our spy here and check out, uh, Rens, see if that's, um, primed for attack. But well, we can do Ken. I don't mind if we do Khan or or Reigns. Ready for orders. Not bothered, but let's bring him down Take to the me. port. What? Get all the armies ready to go. I don't suppose we can recruit anyone else. No, I might send a couple more foot units down here then. Take ready. What? Leaving us a little bit light in London, but anything more? That'll be okay for now. So with our troops safely tucked away into Portsmouth, ready to embarkate next time. Uh, quick look at our objectives. Um, here we are then. Winter of 1805. Well, it's actually early, yeah, early January of 1805. Capture and hold 20 regions, including the regions shown completed by the end of your turn in late December 1812. So we've got seven years to get some action done. We need to take the Blairic Isles, Hanover. Provence, Spain, Denmark, and Brittany. Brit Brittany. Brittany, yeah. Is it Brittany? Yes, Brittany. Spell it differently now. But, um, um, yeah, Brittany. She's this part of France. So we could definitely drop um, Sir Arthur Wellesley here to try and capture this straight away. Spain's going to be a biggie. But is Spain regarded as just one region in here? Oh, it is. Look, we just need to capture Madrid, I, su I suppose. and Or maybe um, Pamplona as well. Okay, I thought there was going to be all the different regions in, in Spain. So that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, so an army down here to capture Spain would be pretty good as well. So we could open up two fronts. So especially if Prussia is attacking from this way. Prestige. France's um, <laughs> military might is way at the top. Um Hmm. Gives us something to think about. Diplomatic relations. Uh, we are allies with Austria, Kingdom of Sicily, Kingdom of Naples, Russia, and Sweden. We're at war with France, obviously. Bavaria, Kingdom of Italy, Spain, um, Batavan, Batavian uh, Republic, Swiss Confederation, and the Baden Württemberg. Yeah, didn't you know? Um, so that's wonderful. We're very friendly with Prussia, but we're not trading with them. So let's get some trade. There you go, that's better. Um, 
And we are allied with Russia, but we're not trading with them. Trade. Yes. Okay. That will bring in some coffers as well. Minor nations. We may not have... Ooh, yeah, Portugal. Yeah, of course, Portugal are our friend. Why on earth are we not trading with them? Um, I don't know how many ports left we've got. Anyone else we can trade with? Yes. Mecklenburg. Okay. These are some names I've not heard before. <laughs> Forgive me. But yeah, okay. We've got some trade negotiations going there, which is good. So hopefully that will increase our trade input and output and uh, obviously give us a little bit more cash each turn. Wonderful. Right, we've got Nelson sailing down here, blocking this uh, trade route for probably Spain and... Have we affected Spain and France's... Oh, France apparently not on that trade route, really. Uh, we're affecting Spain's anyway, so the Spanish fleet might um, be sent to uh, do something with that, with that, or maybe the French fleet will come up and hit us as well, but we'll see. But I think that's us for done for the first turn. And in late January 1805, the Confederation of the Rhine, although nominally independent states, the German lands long eastern banks of the River Rhine are but mere pawns of the so-called Republic of France. Their lords bend the knee to the Grand Emperor and kiss the boots like any other of his lackeys. There is no time for diplomatic bean counting. In this great war you stand either with us or against us, and they have chosen. We must, in all aspects, regard these territories as French possessions. Oh, rubbish. War declared between the Ottoman Empire and Austria. Right, so the French fleet of Villeneuve sailed down here, and the Spanish fleet sailed into here. Um, I want to get Nelson down, but I don't want those two fleets teaming up and causing us some grief. Who have we got coming in behind us? Ah. The Batvian Republic. Oh, it's the, um, it's the Dutch. They've got a bigger fleet than us. Ooh, we don't know the makeup of that fleet, of course. That could be trade ships. But, not good. Oh, and I think we're probably causing them a lot of lost cash with our trading. So let's move the fleet down here and tempt, hopefully. Maybe that'll tempt them to go away. We'll move Nelson back down, well, down towards Gibraltar. We've got a ship going to be popping out of... Have we? Oh no, it's not here. Awaiting further orders. We'll see if they come down to uh, to attack. But we'll in, we got hopefully protection of the fort guns of Portugal. Obviously, just in in my own head. Uh, let's send him over to Reigns. Get the fog of war out of the way, and he can scope the countryside as he goes. Doesn't seem to be much in the way of defences here. Anything else? Let's infiltrate. Oh. That didn't go particularly well. <laughs> there was nothing there, but he was unable to Fleet do it. Ready. Right. Ship's Let's orders. get uh, Wellesley embarked. Ready. Right. Let's send you here. Good. Yes, your right. Majesty. You're there. Right. Yes. I want you to march on that town. Yes, my lord. Uh, you do what you need to do. What we got? We got 2,600 um, cash. Okay, our income is up to 2,045, which is good. Um, we'll keep that as is. Population of the uh, popularity of the government is 43 percent, which is probably higher than most modern. <laughs> uh, governments. Uh, let's have a quick look. How are things going? Trade looks to be building nicely. Austria, we're getting a lot of trade done. And Russia seems to be quite big. So is Prussia. Good. Oh, 
what can we build in London? We can get barracks. This will allow training of um, foot, uh, militia, light foot, and light dragoons. I thought we already did that, did we not? Hmm. Okay, let's get that built. Oh, no, maybe that was down in Gibraltar. Let's just double check that. Did I build a barracks in Gibraltar? Ah, I'm building a barracks in Gibraltar. That's what That's what I thought I'd done it. Got troops being created there. That's being crafted there. We're a little bit light on numbers, but uh, that's just the way it is at the moment. Um, iron. If we upgrade this iron mine for 800, that'll bring in 100 to the regional wealth. Okay, that's well worth it. That'll pay for itself pretty soon. Here we've got a farm which um, we can do clearances, which will bring 200 wealth to the area. How much is that? 900. It's probably worth it as well. What's this one? A merchant house. Uh, this will bring in one per turn town wealth for your regions. 100 regional wealth and 12 per turn town wealth for the region. Okay. I could do that. Or I could get oh, a stud farm. Minus six recruitment costs for cavalry units and a hundred to the region. Okay. Just going to see which ones are going to be bringing the most cash. Over to Cardiff. We get a magistrate built in Cardiff. Um, that'll bring in public school. Okay. We want to do that, but maybe not just yet. Up here, iron. This iron will bring in another hundred wealth, so that'll be quite good. Ireland, we've got a farm over here. Clearances will bring in 200 regional wealth, which is good. Um, down in Cork, we could have a supply post. This will bring plus 8% to the replenishment rate in this region. Or a market. And this will be 50 to the region wealth and 6 per turn to... That's pretty good, but not as good as the others. So I'm thinking... Let's get that done. Leaves us 900 and we'll potentially get the other farm done. Where's that? Was it this one? This was the stud, wasn't it? Yeah. We won't do that just yet. Let's do the one maybe in Ireland then. Oh yeah, we need to get that into a trading post as well up there in Glasgow. Um, well, let's get that one done. Hopefully that'll bring in some cash next time. Start bringing in cash in those regions anyway and that'll Playing the long game, that'll help us no end. Okay, but here comes the Spanish fleet. Oh, the Spanish fleet want to take on Nelson. Oh, no, and the French fleet will come in. Um, the Spanish general here. He's got the Santisma Trinidad. That is a huge ship. That is huge. Um, 122 gun ship of the line. Victoria. Um, Arrogante. 106 gun ship. 74 gun. 74 gun. 32 gun. What have we got the French? We've got Gilles, um, Gilles Villeneuve. Um, Pierre Charles Villeneuve has got 122 gun ship of the line. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we retreat. One, I'd take on those fleet. Oh, not straight to the. Oh, that's the Portuguese, isn't it? I'll take one of those fleets on at a time, no problem at all. But both of them together looks a little bit dangerous for our health. Uh, we've recruited one foot unit in Gibraltar. Right, Wesley, let's go and capture this region. Begin siege. Right, all they can do is arm citizenry. Um, let's let's just say, look, surrender, and you won't lose any lives. Evening siege. I, I thought they would enjoy that. Yeah, <laughs> it was the only sensible option. Um, so what we can do? Settlement has been captured. Rens in Brittany. We can peacefully occupy this region. We'll get no money from looting. Um, prediction regional wealth will be 500 per turn. 
the public order from the uh, upper and lower classes won't change too much. Uh, peaceful occupation will result in minor damage to military buildings within the settlement. Looting will require two grand. Uh, it'll only be predicted wealth of a hundred after that, and the people will not enjoy our presence at all. Minus 18. Looting will result in considerable damage to all buildings within the settlement. Or liberation. Liberation will give rise to a new protectorate in the region, loyal to your nation whilst diplomatic relations are strong. Resources permitting, a force of conscripts will be granted to the liberating army on behalf of the new protectorate. Um, that would be good because that we'd get some troops and then we don't have to manage this region. However, we won't make any money. So if we peacefully occupy for the moment, we'll start generating cash, and that's really what I want. We'll give it. We'll give it over to uh, the new French town later. But for now, let's just hold on to it. Ready. We'll send our fleet over here. On Maybe we can La Havre. We'll um, cause a bit of disruption there. Let's go and infiltrate Khan. See what's going on there. Percival Slaughter has made it in. Let's have a look. What's happening over in Khan? No recruitment at the moment. Nothing building. Army. They've got some fusiliers of the line. Nope. Reasonable. And some Lancer as well. Maybe we'll try and do some sabotage next time. But that's good. That's good. Right. Where is... Nelson. There's Nelson here. Oh, no, they're, they're sticking close to each other, aren't they? They they know I can't attack them when they're together. I could, but you know, the, the loss I could potentially suffer would be not worth it. Meanwhile, here in Gibraltar, that port is still being built. As soon as that's done, the better. We get some more troops being built here. Let's get some uh, militia. Just because they're cheap and uh, they, you know, they kind of fill the ranks for the moment. I love the music and the uh, audio in this, by the way. Over here, we've got uh, a farm. We could potentially upgrade that, get some clearances. That will generate even more money, won't it? What will that bring into 200 to the region? Similar as we did over here. Meanwhile, in Cardiff, we could get the magistrate built. We've got some light infantry and some foot infantry there. Roads are also a definite consideration. That will help trade no end. But foot, we're going to get Glasgow, weren't we? Glasgow, Glasgow. Let's get that into a trading post. And then hopefully we can make some money. Is that... Almost completed um, building that merchant ship. They take a bit of time. I, it's only because... Um, the time skips. Each turn is a month, I think. Or maybe it's early February and late February. Maybe it's two, it's, uh, two turns per month. And uh, that's why the ships aren't being produced so quickly. Because you just think, oh, it should be done by now. All right, let's get a uh, merchant ship from there. That leaves us one gold coin. So, unfortunately, that is our spend done. Um, our research is four more turns until we get the division of labor complete. That's looking good. I think the idea was for us to bring those troops down here to Lisbon and then push up from um, Gibraltar. But what I might do is see if I can form up one of these generals with some more troops and send them down to Gibraltar. Get Nelson to steer us in and use one of the other fleets to drop them off. And, um, and then try and push through here as well. Although we're just trying to build the cash up at the moment so we have the, the wealth and trade to be able to finance this war. And in late February, so yeah, each turn is uh, half a month, so it's two weeks, there or thereabouts. Recruitment! Um, we've got a merchantman in the Irish Sea, a merchantman in the Irish Sea, brilliant, and we've got some militia in Gibraltar. Also, ancillary gained, George III, minister, minus one to prestige. Imshi, imshi. Um, right. 
Villeneuve has tried to make a run for it, so we're going to send Nelson up there. One of the things was to prevent Villeneuve's force getting through. These look quite evenly matched fleets. Oh, actually, no. We've got the advantage. Number-wise, we're the same, but he's got only one um, first-rate. He's got some 78 guns, which we'd probably class as third-rates. Yeah, third-rates. Okay. Okay, so here we are. The fleet is assembled and it's raining. And uh, wet weather is not good. They say misfires can happen. There's the enemy fleet over there. So let's get these guys grouped up. Who we got? We got the Rose, Dolphin, Shannon. Where's Piggott? Where's Piggott there? Let's get Piggott next. Uh, then we've got. We're going to go line formation. They're a little bit tight here. I'll try and space them out a little bit more. Um, actually, if I can... Will they do... If I do that, will they go from group and formation line? Yes, there we go. That's a lot easier. <laughs> okay, put them into a line formation. Um, we Hopefully we've got our best ships at the front, which looks like we do. And to be fair, all these ships are pretty handy. The wind is going across us. Um, we can't quite see where they are, so what we'll try to sail up here and try and cross their T, as it were. Bring all our broadsides to bear. Put the marines on there. Has we got any marines in the uh, fighting tops? No, not yet. Oh, they're climbing. Going up the rat runs. Now, look at that. Yeah, so the marines are going up into the fighting tops. And they'll do some uh, musket fire from up there. Let's go up to our lead ship. Now, obviously, naval conflict only came into the Total War series, I think, with Empire. Uh, so it was a relatively new thing back back here. Uh, I've never been particularly good with it. All the other, Rome Total War, Medieval 2, all those, you all did um, auto-resolve in the naval battles, so this will be interesting. There we go. My first Marine is up on the fighting top. Nice. You can see the mist and murk as we sail towards the enemy. Getting nearly in position to fire. It won't be long now. Yes, this, this little corvette. Oh, there we go. He's going to take the absolute wrath of the roses opening barrage. Encouraged the superior force. Oh, okay. He thinks he's in the superior force, does he? Or it's just that he's got all these ships around him, probably, which has given him a false sense of security. Second volley from the Rose. Or oh. That was brutal. Hull's been damaged. And then they're all opening up. Obviously, what I really want them to do is start focusing on the the ship. Start attacking that one. That's probably where we want our guns to go. Let's get the Admiral's ship in trouble. <laughs> I'm so tempted just to finish this one off. Concerned by hull damage sustained during the battle. I'm not surprised. Yeah, big chunks missing. Oh, the debris there. Currently got them. Uh, where's the guns to bear? We can obviously do manual firing, where we can 
concentrate an entire broadside at them. All right, let's sail around them. Bring them into the noose. This one's a goner. Not sure how long... Oh, there goes her mast. She'll probably surrender very soon. I, I would have thought. Ah, she's get, still giving it large. Now we need a two-mast ship. The rigging's taking a punching. Broadsides have been exchanged behind. Some intense firing over here. She's still afloat, amazingly. Okay, this guy's not going to be like mean at the end. So obviously his stern is becoming vulnerable. Full broadside. Ooh. Beautiful. Okay, we've got them pinched in now and they're going to hit each other. Oh, they bumped off each other. Is that fire I can hear? Is that what that bell is? Concerned of fire. The Admiral might have a fire on his ship, which I do not want to get too close to him, if that's the case. Oh! Sent a savage full broadside out. Concerned for the attack from the stern, I know. Kind of a bit isolated there, aren't you? That one's sunk. Right, if we could concentrate most fire on this one, please. She's in a bad way. Her hull is quite badly damaged on this side. That's what you can do with the light, fast-moving ships, is get and attack the sterns of the ship. Send the cannon all shot all the way through, which is devastating. Alright, let's, let's give them a full broadside if we can. Oh, there we go. The Admiral ship is on fire. The enemy Admiral ship is on fire. Let's not get too close to that. This is... Okay, they put it put it out, I think. Right, got a full broadside, we'll send it at this sh ship coming in now. There, Admiral has fallen, sir. Yay. Now we They've surrendered. Villeneuve is ours. Excellent. Right, now we've got to go against the wind slightly, which is going to be a bit of a pain. Especially for these large ships. But um, it's okay. We'll bend it round and let them come into us. If we can tack hard. That might work. Right, let's concentrate on this one now. Concerned that the Admiral died recently. Yep, you well, you would be. It's not good news, is it? Oh, the Queen over here is uh, not looking particularly good. Look at the damage. Let's get her doing some repairs. As the rest of them come round. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. 
Are we okay? Bloody hell! Those poor buggers. I was hoping to be able to capture that. What's that? 175, 200 troops. Maybe we can... Friendly fire there. What I might do is try and see if we can capture some of these. Right, they're repairing. Oh, she's on fire apparently. Oh my goodness. Right, carry out some repairs. You guys, come this way. I was going to try, let's just try and annihilate them then. Okay, fire's out by the looks of it. Good news. Still doing some work. Right, you guys, stop with your repairs. And get moving. See if we can capture this guy. Okay, we've got another ship over here which is sinking. And the light corvettes or uh, frigates. Bring you over here. Now we'll start. some repairs soon. And they're now coming into the main force. Wrong side. Alright, let's get the Rose back into the fight. And we'll give this... Who's this coming up here? The Alquil... Alcalon. Taste of her own medicine. Fire. On fire. Right, move away! Move away! <laughs> okay, we'll have to um, get these guys repaired and uh, underway. Oh, she's surrendered. Brilliant. Her fire's out there, which is also good news. Right, those two are dancing with that one. Oh, we might just give her a full broadside. Close range. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Glorious victories, huh? She's surrendered. Brilliant. While well, you bring it around there. Right. Bring your broadsides to the bear. Okay, let's see if we can get his sails and uh, rigging. I hope he's slowing down. Did a bit of damage. And victory! Victory is yours! You can choose whether to end the battle now. Yeah, let's end the battle now. I could be chasing him for ever in a day, couldn't I? It's a heroic victory for Horatio Nelson against Vilna. Huzzah! Huzzah! Huzzah. I was always slightly out of time. Victory for Horatio Nelson. He had six ships deployed, lost zero, remaining six, enemies killed three, captured zero. Pierre Charles Villeneuve, six ships deployed, he lost five, he captured one. I, does that mean, I don't understand that. Or does that mean lost by captured? 
I guess so. Um, so a 74 gun ship of the line, Saint Felipe. Let's add that to the fleet. Um, I thought the others may have survived, but that apparently it was just that one. Yeah, I, I'd have thought captured would be there. I suppose that's have how many of their ships were captured by the enemy, isn't it? That's what it is. It just looks a little bit odd. But there we go, our first victory, and it's it's um it's a naval battle. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be a uh, a land battle, but the land um for the territory was uh, just handed over. Brilliant. Yes, my lord. Meanwhile, Sir Arthur Wellesley is uh, doing grand. I'm thinking we might go on to move on to Khan next. We were going to recruit some militia, weren't we? And then, where's the next town? Quite a ways away, so unlikely the French are going to be able to send um, uh, tro uh, troops to capture this town while we move our army on to Khan. So hopefully when the uh, militia gets created, they'll garrison that town for us. They are trapped. Aha! Here we go. So, Sartha Wellesley with his two light screen units, two nine-pounder guns, well, gun units, and he's got a numerous, well, six-foot soldier units up against uh, Fusiliers of the line, some Lancers and um, Citizens basically. This should be... we can't demand that they surrender so let's attack. So here he is, Sir Arthur Wellesley, scoping out the battle before him. Right, let's have a look what we got. Um, can we see we got the town, they can go into these towns to kind of protect themselves. Armed citizenry, where's their main force? Ah, here they are. Okay, right, what we're looking for is a little bit of high ground. We've got a bit of high ground here. Is this the best bit of high ground we've got? Probably. Let's get our dragoons, dragoons over there. And let's bring our Order. cannon up here. Let's um, deploy the cannons. Let's get them. Like that, nice. And then was my second lot cannon. I could put them here, I suppose. This is another high bit of ground. If they're going to march through the woods, catch them in the crossfire. Although I like to bring my cannons together, so uh, maybe we'll pop them here. And pop those ones there. You set up. Artillery. And there's wolves as well. Right, there we go. So we got those firing there. This is the main forces. I'm not worried about these um, flintlock armed troops. We'll get these line troops covering off this little yes, dell there. General the general, we'll get him in the woods watching. Yes, keep him out of the way for the moment. Uh, we'll keep these guys here as well because this is kind of high ground, so it'd be good to. Hold that as best we can, and make sure we got the cavalry on the flank, and we got the cavalry protecting this flank. Um, I'm wondering, do I need a unit of troops here? Possibly. I'm just going to bring those guys up there, just in case their cavalry units attack. They can defend the guns a bit better. Bit of a gap here, but that's okay. We should be fine with this uh, opposition. So let's start the battle. Get our artillery, reporting. artillery. I'm going to say the general is in this unit. Oh, I don't even need to give them orders. Look at that. They're already firing at them. Brutal, isn't it? Oh, they're going to kill themselves running. Oh, no. Oh, they can jump these, can they? Oh, okay. I thought they were like mines for horses. Ooh. There's a ricochet there. Oh! He 
is brutal. And it's only going to get more brutal. Right, how far before we can go to the canister shop? Oh, it's a little bit, bit of time yet. Right, I think these guys are probably safe to um, move over here, actually. Get to walk behind the cannon. Oh, now they're switching because I've seen where the cavalry's going. Right, are we within canister shot? Almost. Concentrate. Oh, they're, they're pulling away. Okay. Look, these have got no chance. Look at them. Our guys can fire three rounds a minute, probably. And the canister shot is making short work of the guys at the end. Right. First wave defeated. Infantry. You pop in there. Yes, sir. Let's see what these guys are doing. They're running away. These are reforming. I would send the cavalry in after them, but then they'll get swamped by the other troops. So we'll keep them up on the wall. Up on the hill, sorry. Here comes the cavalry. Can I tempt you with my cavalry? Yes, I think I can. Right. Halt. Hold fire. Hold fire. We want to get some cameras. Okay, let's try and tempt them. We need firing by rank, that would be useful. Right, um, you, you. Far away. Oh, right down the flank of them. Right. These guys form a wedge. Oh, their cavalry is looking dangerous. these guys in the flank. That should break them. Attention! <laughs> right, those units have formed square. Let's get them out of the way. Sir, our general is under attack. The enemy general has been killed. Where's our general? He's in the woods. He should be fine. There goes our cavalry into the armed musket wielding civilians. It's soon to be on. Hold fire. Don't fire at my cavalry. In fact, continue. Mercilessly hunt them down. Arthur, get in there. Get some kills, sunshine. One of the frustrating things about this AI, this little spear trap for horses here, one of our cavalry units managed to run straight into it when they were chasing um, soldiers. I mean, seriously, are they that dumb? Apparently they are. But So we've lost a unit of cavalry due to their own stupidity, and these guys are uh, winning decisively. They're very tired, uh, but they don't seem to realise the guys are literally standing right next to them. So come over here, guys, and there they are, look. This guy's just got two kills. 
You can do it by walk if they want. Get your confidence back up. So at the end of what is a victory, a calamitous victory at the end, actually, losing those unit of cavalry. I'm quite annoyed with that, those large dragoons. Uh, that's probably going to make up 45 of the lost <laughs> troops, which is almost half of them, which is slightly frustrating. Never mind. Anyway, it's a decisive victory, and our, our foot looks pretty much okay, and our guns are okay. A couple of losses from the two remaining cavalry units, which is good. But Khan is ours. Um, so we can loot it, get 2,000 cash. Um, predicted wealth gain will be 60 after that per turn. Predicted public order will be minus 9, or we can just not take the cash and just take the increased... Um, loot. Let's do peaceful occupy. Seems to be the, the easiest way of doing it. It saves costs of um, having to repair as well. Normandy and Brittany are now under British rule, as they always should be. Right, let's move our agent on. We could potentially send him um, to a pasture down here, which would be quite exciting. What could be in the field? Um, we've got Orleans down here, or Paris. Let's send him down to Par Paris and see what, what's going on there. I don't think we quite got the the uh, troops to attack Paris just yet. Um, recruitment. Let's get some um, more militia created, and those guys are retraining as well, which is good. We'll leave them be for the moment then. Right. Oh, who we got down here? Pierre Argenot. At your service. It's gonna be tricky. Yeah, it's, I'm not going to risk him for 46%. Uh, we could potentially come down here to this town and infiltrate that. Shadowing the target. And just do some sabotage and basically stop them researching stuff, which could uh, pose a benefit in the long run. Right. Uh, we got 1,300 cash. We've got the stud farm, which wants to uh, be upgraded, of course. Ah, do we have a ship in here? Yes, we do. We have a merchant ship. Right, let's get that sailing up to, where's this? To Baltimore. Let's send that to Baltimore. Get some 20 tobacco. Sounds awesome. Glasgow is still building their port. Westford is still building their port. We have a ship in Bristol. Right, this trade vessel, let's send that over here to St. Augustine. And they'll start bringing in uh, trade for us, which will be great. And in early March 1805, we've got a letter of demands from Brittany. Uh, your noble class has written a letter objecting to the recent tax increases, demanding that they be re returned to prior levels. I wasn't aware I had changed the tax level. Failure to answer their ultimatum could lead to uh, the, direct, the direst of consequences. If the nobles can rally the common folk around them, they could bring about an armed uprising against the government. Oh joy! Workers in strike in Brittany. What 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 the hell happened here? Let's get some more troops. Um what is our policies? Alright, let's let's drop the tax then. For the nobility. Uh, maybe for the lower classes. Uh. Hopefully this will generate some growth, if nothing else. Um, that will lower it to a thousand income profit a, a turn, which is not great. And we come to late March 1805. Um, clearances in Ireland and in uh, where are we at? Yorkshire in England and also in Gibraltar. We've got the barracks being completed. Um, we've got a trade ship. In the North Sea, that could be anywhere. Um, and we got some units of troops created as well. Plus, George Ethelstone, Admiral, Parrot, plus one to morale in battles. Who's a pretty boy then? Squawk. He's got himself a Parrot. Nice. So, where is this trade ship? Is it over here? It is. Right, have we got any trade points up here? Up there to Russia? No, we don't. Okay, that's fine. So I'll send this one. Um, we'll go and we'll go to Baltimore as well. Get that one up there. 
Of course, we've got this one over here. Let's move um, Nelson up here first to see what's about. And if I'm bringing Nelson back, actually, he can take the troops down to Gibraltar. Okay, that looks to be okay. So let's get this trade ship and send them over there. And then this little fleet can uh, protect around here. So only a thousand... Ah! There be the Spanish. Alright. Sail away. You head that way. And... Um, you come over here just to kind of protect them for the moment. And we'll try and get that little Spanish trading fleet next time. Um, over here we've got a town popping up. We can make a gunsmith. Let's do that. That brings some um, opportunities to the region. And then we've got our chap here. Sabotage. 66% chance of sabotage in the mine. Watching and listening. He was unsuccessful that time. Okay, so I'm going to look at Brittany now. Um, what I'm going to do is going to bump the tax levels up. Uh, and I might make them exempt from paying tax for the moment. That's a far better way to finance our war. Keeps them happy, and yet we don't I impact our income as much. Well, it does a little. <laughs> That's an extra 300 uh, gold per pot uh, per turn, which will certainly help. Um, maybe if we can get some... Protestant preachers here. That'll calm them down and they'll uh, they'll love us a little bit more. And in early April 1805, division of labour has been completed. This nation has made a major advance in their manufacturing technology, placing them one step ahead of their rival rivals for the time being at least. Division of labour creates a more skilled and organised workforce by making workers specialise in only one task. Nice. Also, we have completed a trading port in Scotland. In Glasgow in Scotland. And the Kingdom of Italy has been destroyed. Very sadly. But one of our um, trade ships has gone up there and uh, is now trading um, tobacco from Baltimore, which is excellent. Excellent. So, we've also got another trade ship going up there to do some tobacco. Uh, I did see... French fleet looking off here so fleet ready. I may send you in Set sail. to see what the Spanish have got there they've only got three oh, ships we're not blockaded we are going into attack now the Spanish have a corvette uh, which is 24 gun uh, merchantman, merchantman. Here are our ships all set up. Right, let's, um, there we go. Uh, right, let's get all set up. Let's get these guys all and stick them in a, a row. Um, yeah, Hermione is at the front. Right, uh, the wind is going Zatave, so, um, yeah, we'll try and cut in on this side of them. Yeah, I'll try and go that way. Now, where we go? Let's have a look at their ships. Only three of them. These are trade ships mostly, and obviously they've got their escorting corvette, which is like a, a light frigate. 24 guns. She's basically there as a little channel groper to keep um, pirates off the uh, trade ships but she shouldn't be any match for any of our ships to be fair alright let's cut in by the time they sail on that will be cutting around them and we'll uh, try and get to their stern I know it means that we're not getting them in range just yet, but it should pay off in a little while. Let's say I'm not the best when it comes to the combat in this uh, game, especially the naval battles. They're a little bit different. 
But I certainly do enjoy it. Man, the merchant ships are getting hammered. As I say, I'm not terribly worried about destroying the merchant ships. I wouldn't mind trying to capture them. 55 troops. I'm half tempted to try and send, send these two ships to try and capture these two. Let's target this one. This is the one we need to finish, boys. <laughs> I know the merchant ships are like juicy targets, so stop doing it! The pirates, you bloody pirates! Man overboard! Glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. He's sinking, and he's surrendering. Right. They're not listening to my orders. Fine. Do what you want. <laughs> They're going for blood. This obviously very badly interrupts uh, Spain's income from trade. going into the wind so he's basically coming to a dead stop turning through the uh, turning through the wind is always a challenge uh, we'll see if we can just hit the rigging on this one so the hull is quite badly damaged oh she's sinking never mind never mind Bring the line round and uh, put hell through this poor little ship here. Trying to weave our way through the sinking merchants. Soon gonna be coming into a crisscross of cannon fire. Ooh. He's almost gone. His hull's almost smashed. And there we go, heroic victory. Didn't take much. Hip, hurrah! Hip, hip, hurrah! Hip, hip, hurrah. We managed to capture the Corvette. Okay, we'll add it to the fleet. It certainly helps. Nice. It'd be nice to have those motion ships, though. Never mind. They're a little bit too eager to be pirates, my boys. Alright, so that means that trade point is... Um, well, trade post is now open, so we'll get our trade ship into that. Right, let's get you back over here. Get you over here. And how much will that generate per turn? It's just the one ship. Obviously, we can stack them. 520 gold. Nice. Right, Nelson, head over here. I'm sure I saw a French fleet. Let's um Let's sit on that trade lane anyway. And if they are coming up we should be able to intercept them. Nice turning to piracy there. Good, 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 good. So we got eighteen hundred gold. Let's have a look at our little dominion down here in Gibraltar. We've got this trade post. Obviously I'd like to send some ships, but I know there's a Spanish fleet here. 
Uh, so... I might build ship. 690... Sorry, 649 for a 38 gun fifth rate. Let's get that built. Nice. Gibraltar proper. We've got the army... We've got that being trained. I'm also going to put some roads because when we move out our army, we'd want the replenishments to happen a little bit quicker. Brittany, things are looking a little bit calmer now, I think. Got two units there. I did see a French general wandering around here, which is a bit of a concern. Over at Khan, the army is almost recovered. Which is good. Again, a road here might be good. I'll stick that in. Um, which kind of limits us going forward. We'll bring our army down to Portsmouth. And then from here, we'll send... Do I send the gun? I'll send the gun as well. And we should have people training here? No, we don't. Okay, we need to get some more troops trained there. We should have a couple in Glasgow. Yeah, we've got one in Glasgow. Okay. This guy is going all the way up there to trade as well, which is good. And say, so if we can get this army yes. down to Gibraltar under John Moore, Sir John Moore, uh, where he's got some cavalry, some Highland footline, and also a couple of six pounders. I'll hopefully get him a start and a foothold down here in Gibraltar and, and we can then push on um, through this little town and up to Madrid and capture Madrid. Probably going to be a lot of forces there so we can stack them down here, push on to Madrid. It's going to be quite the march as well. But um, I think we're going to do that next time. So there we go. Our first look at Napoleon Total War. We've made um, some good progress to begin with uh, I'm just I should have actually said this at the start we are playing vanilla no mods uh, and we're on um, just the standard I think it's normal difficulty for campaign and battles just because I haven't played this in forever and a day so um, just to get us back into the swing of things um, if this campaign goes well which it should do because we're making good ground already I'm thinking about potentially doing a longer run with Empire Total War that's the one I know more about. I've only got a few hours in in Napoleon because um, I never really got into it, even though I love the Napoleonic uh, era. With, uh, as I say, with Hornblower series and with uh, Sharp series as well. Plus, you've all got the other great films like Master and Commander and, and all those kind of uh, period dramas, which is awesome. So we've managed to do quite a bit today. We have. Um, well, we've got Nelson to flex his muscles, and we destroyed Pierre Charles uh, Villeneuve's fleet down here. Um, there is a Spanish fleet which has a large Santisma Trinidad, which is a huge ship for, um, for the Spanish, which I'm probably going to have to get Nelson to go down there to engage as well. Uh, we also have our um, Admiral... Is it Elphiston or is it um, Corn? Oh, is that be Elphiston? He's got the uh, more stars. Has his in first engagement as well and managed to uh, destroy a couple of Spanish ships over there, which has freed up that trade port for us, which is great. Now he's going to patrol the English Channel for us and keep Britain safe. So Arthur Wellesley was dropped onto French soil, captured Brittany before marching on to uh, Cannes to capture Normandy. And this is where we currently find ourselves. Uh, we have the army here of Sir John Moore, which Nelson is going to transport down to Gibraltar, as I just said. And he's going to create a second front uh, for Napoleon to defend against, pushing on to Madrid through Spain and trying to capture or liberate Spain, which would be great. We also need to capture the Balearic Isles. It's going to be one of our key... Um, capture points is Barcelona and uh, Pamplona as well. Um, yeah. I think we obviously lost the Italian states. Rome's uh, Rome, as they say. And uh, France haven't been too aggressive yet, which 
I worry about because I think they're probably building. Look at that force in Paris. I'm a little bit worried about that, but there we go. And I think we also need to take um, Holland, don't we? And have that under the British yoke for all things to be well in the world. Uh, and we'll continue with this next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Give us a thumbs up if you have, and I will see you again next time. Thanks for watching.